The heart of an average human being beats 72 times a minute. These, however, are not ordinary human beings. They are the Mayans. Their hearts beat only 50 times a minute. Their teeth do not decay. Their skull cavities are different from any other human beings. They are the descendants of an extraordinary people who long ago created an astonishing civilization. Then they vanished. Where did they come from? Why did their civilization flourish, then disappear? This ancient observatory suggests a knowledge of astronomy that rivals anything we know today. Yet it was built more than a thousand years ago. Who designed it? Where did they get their knowledge? Most puzzling of all, where did they go? series presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. The producer's purpose is to suggest some possible explanation, but not necessarily the only ones, to the mysteries we will examine. The biblical story of Genesis and the theory of evolution agree. In the beginning, out of the void came light, the great creative force. light separated from darkness, becoming the first day. And from this great expanse, the sky was created and dry land emerged from the deep. Earth, the great mother, giving birth to all kinds of vegetation, the marsh and mud landscape was transformed into mountains and lakes. Finally, the expanse of sky was filled with lights, separating day from night. The movement of the stars marked the passage of time, the recurring cycles of the days, the seasons, the years. The waters brought forth life. Swarms of living creatures filled the seas. Birds and other winged life filled the skies. All sorts of beasts and crawling things populated the land. It was into this setting that mankind was born. Living simply at first, mankind grappled with the problems of survival, seeking warmth and the guidance of the stars. Building only the simplest of shelters against the elements. In most cases, civilization developed slowly, but there appears to be an exception. Deep within the jungles of Mexico and Guatemala, a culture emerged unlike any other. At Tikal, the sacred heart of the Mayan world, pyramids stand as ancient links between earth and sky. Why did this ancient people build such elaborate ceremonial complexes? Pre-Columbian scholar and poet Al Urista believes the Maya to be the oldest culture in the world. 
The pyramids that these people built were centers of learning. They were places where men and women were to become creators, masters of energy, masters of matter and energy. People who would learn in those centers how to transform matter and energy. They were also initiatory chambers, not open to everybody. These secret societies were dedicated to the study of astronomy based on mathematics. No evidence has been found to explain the Mayan advances in astronomy and mathematics. The silent sentinels they left behind indicate only the methods they used to mark the passage of time. They could easily compute the exact day of the week a given date would fall 400 million years later. Ancient Mayans devised a unique numbering system. They used dots to signify one, bars for five, and a simple stylized shell for zero. Thus, they anticipated our decimal system by thousands of years. In 1947, Giles Healy made an extraordinary discovery. In a small temple, in a seemingly unimportant religious center called Bonampak, Healy found a gold mine of information about Mayan ceremonial life. In three small chambers, he uncovered a series of exquisite murals documenting the pageantry of a thousand-year-old religion. The murals tell of a grand processional of music and masked dancers who appear to be impersonating mysterious gods, perhaps in the hopes of winning their favor. There is a raid on a nearby village. Captives are taken. Prisoners sacrificed. Significantly, there is always present one commanding figure, the priest astronomer. The palace observatory at Palenque reveals the priests to be preoccupied with the study of the stars and preserving the ancient sacred mysteries. Long before Columbus, Mayan men of knowledge filled libraries with hundreds of books on their history and the complex cycles of the planets. These books were important because the priests believed that history repeats itself. Carefully recorded events were for them a guide to the future. The Mayan written language is still largely undeciphered. One day, it might provide answers to some puzzling questions. This toy crocodile is evidence that the wheel was known to the early Mayans, but they made no practical use of it. Why? The priest scientist directed the building of an elaborate road system. The longest cuts an absolutely straight line 62 miles through the jungle. One wonders about the spiritual motivation behind the construction of this complex network linking sacred cities. One road ends at Uxmal, the oldest Mayan city in the Yucatan Peninsula. It can be seen as a colossal monument to one thing, the snake. Al Urista explains. The basic assumptions about life in the universe were that nothing is static on Earth. Everything moves, and everything that moves has a measure. And everything that has a measure moves in a spiral. Nothing moves in a straight line. This is the way they conceived energy, and that's why they call themselves the Chan clan. Chan simply means snake. In the north, the snake cult reached its greatest power, symbolized by a new god called Kukulkan, the feathered serpent. Mayan folklore holds that Kukulkan was a bearded, light-skinned man who brought a renaissance to citadels like Chichen Itza and provided the Mayans with a highly advanced knowledge of engineering and astronomy. 
From Chichen Itza's observatory, the Mayan priests, it was said, read the future in the patterns of the stars. In ancient times, Chichen Itza was a thriving ceremonial center, a place of pilgrimage where Mayans came to worship and enjoy society. While the priests were careful to attend to their civic responsibilities, they were forever seeking ways to provide spiritual guidance for their subjects. To that end, Kuku Khan erected a perfect calendar temple. A pyramid with 364 steps leading up to the temple, which represents the 365th day of the tropical year. Legend has it that Kuku Khan understood the power of the snake. He thus translated this power and energy into a recurring architectural phenomenon. Twice a year, on the spring and fall equinox at precisely 5 p.m., the sun reveals a serpent slithering down the temple's balustrade, dramatically announcing the end of one seasonal cycle and the beginning of another. According to legend, the enlightened Kuku Khan disappears and black sorcerers come from the north. At the sacred well, archaeologists have dredged up hundreds of human bones. The Mayans believed that only the most perfect children were pure enough for the gods. Ancient Mayans played the first known team sport in history. For them, it had terrifying consequences. It was played by priests on a huge ball court linked astronomically to a map of the heavens. Without using hands or feet, the object was to send a rubber ball through a small ring set high on the wall. Winning was so rare that victors were rewarded with all the spectator's possessions. Losing meant that the players were put to death. Then it appears that suddenly the priests left the temples. Did Mayan astronomers see a different age in the stars? Was it the end of a cosmic cycle? No one knows for sure. It is a strange and fascinating puzzle. The answer may be found in an incredible drama played out in an obscure place by men who served a different god. The ancient Mayans abandoned their sacred cities hundreds of years before the arrival of the Spanish in the New World. When the Spaniards came, they were awed by the architectural triumph of Mayan cities and at the same time, mystified by the radically different people who had built them. The coming of the Spanish friars cemented the Spanish conquest of the Yucatan. The conquistadores came to battle foreign soldiers. The friars came to battle foreign gods. Gathering up all the Mayan archives, all the chronicles of this ancient wisdom, the friars came together at Mani. Alarista laments the occasion. The Mayan books uh, were burnt during the conquest by the religious zeal of the Christians led by Bishop Landa. This is a terrible catastrophe given the fact that the Mayas constitute the oldest civilization in the world. It's interesting to note that that religious zeal, that antagonism against Mayan knowledge was sourced in the Mayan use of the snake. The Christians associated the snake with the devil and seeing that the Mayas had the snake in every single one of their sculptures, in every single one of their halls, in their clothing, in their jewelry, they concluded that these people were children of the devil and that any information or knowledge associated with these people was obviously the knowledge of the devil that had to be destroyed.
Now the conquest was utter and complete. The destruction of Mayan knowledge was ruthless and would forever frustrate scholars by its loss. If there was ever a key to the mysterious hieroglyphic writing, it is gone, and we are left to speculate about the strange disappearance of this remarkable civilization. Some scholars have suggested that the Mayan leadership was decimated by malaria and yellow fever. Yet these diseases seem to have been unknown in ancient times. Others contend that the priests were cast out by rebellious elements within the empire. But there is no archaeological evidence to support that conclusion. Another possible explanation is that the Mayans moved to escape a natural catastrophe. Perhaps an earthquake. The area is known for them. Guatemala City sits on a 40 million year old fault. On February 4th, 1976, at 3.04 a.m., the earth shook with such a violence that it resulted in one of the worst disasters to ever hit the Western Hemisphere. 90 times stronger than the quake that leveled Managua, Nicaragua in 1972, it was felt along a 2,000 mile strip of Central America, right through the heart of the ancient Mayan world. The quake fractured the land, reducing a great city to rubble. It destroyed 20% of all buildings and left more than a million homeless. In the end, 23,000 died. Yet even with such a history of earthquakes, people do not seem to have been discouraged from building and settling along this ancient fault line. Some believe that the Mayans abandoned their lands because of crop failure. They simply depleted the soil and had to move on. For thousands of years, Mayan peasants have been beating back the jungle, burning out cornfields. Even today, corn makes up 80% of the Mayan diet. Crop failure is a horrendous disaster. But Al Arista is unconvinced. He dismisses such easy explanations as earthquake and crop failure. The pre-scientists were able to predict earthquakes as well as the kind of weather conditions that would be propitious for a specific kernel of corn. And there were 28 kernels of corn developed for specific weather conditions. These people had developed a socialist, a communistic society where everything that was raised by the people was distributed to the people according to their need. Others have suggested that changing climate could account for the sudden disappearance of the ancient Mayans. Alarista also believes this unlikely. They also use psychic energy in order to attract clouds in the event of drought, so that the idea of rain dance is not really uh, a very far out idea if you understand it in terms of psychic energy. The Mayas had a very good reason for building their pyramids on these energy grids, because this enabled them to awaken psychic energy within initiates that came to these art centers. The Maya Itzai disappeared mysteriously, but they did not leave the earth. They simply concluded a cycle of civilization and took off to the east. The journey to the east starts right here in the peninsula de Yucatan. It is from this peninsula that they cross the sea, stop in Egypt into the Red Sea, go up towards Nepal. It was there that they started their second cycle of civilization. One of the colonies of the Maya Itzai was to be found at the foot of the Dead Sea, where the monastery of the Essenes was located. It was there that Jesus learned about the philosophy of the world. Alarista offers a startling conclusion. The last words of Christ on the cross were not Aramaic words. They were stylized 
man words. And they did not mean, oh God, why have thy forsaken me? They meant, at last, I sink in the dawn of your presence. Today, little survives of the old practices and beliefs. For a civilization once first among all those in the world, there remains only ruins and a cave, an ancient house of worship. The priestly knowledge it contained is lost, forgotten. Perhaps the ancient Mayans anticipated this when they wrote long ago, all moons, all years, all days, all winds take their course and pass away. The ancient Mayans, men of knowledge, conceived their time on Earth their cycle of civilization to be 5,200 years. Beginning their calendar August 12, 3113 BC, they predicted that on December 24, 2011 AD, a cataclysmic earthquake would terminate their cycle of civilization. New men of knowledge would then appear to fight the forces of evil and lead the people to create a world government. If the Mayan men of knowledge were right, in just 34 years, we may learn the answers to some of the ancient Mayan mysteries. Lost civilization, extraterrestrials, myths and monsters, missing persons, magic and witchcraft, unexplained phenomena, in search of cameras are traveling the world, seeking out these great mysteries. This program was the result of the work of scientists, researchers, and a group of highly skilled technicians.